So I'll be honest, one of the things that I haven't really done much in my career is contributing to open source software. And one of the main reasons is whenever I make a PR, it kind of just sits there and it goes stale and it just rots and then it gets auto-closed by bots. Uh, but recently I decided, you know what, I've been using the ZSA uh, library, which is a nice utility library for basically creating validated server actions for the inputs you pass in, the, in the outputs that come out. And then also it has support for creating middlewares kind of like TRPC, where you can create a function that runs some authentication checks, maybe it runs some authorization, you know, role-based authorization checks, or just, you know, does some rate limiting before all your server actions run. And I really liked it, right? So I went ahead and just started integrating with it. And I, the first thing that I noticed is that when I tried to run an action, it didn't have built-in support for transitions, right? So I'd go ahead and submit this, the spinner would show, but then the UI would take like another half a second to kind of update where I wanted this panel to stay completely expanded until the entire transition finishes, right? So that's the, that's the idea. So I went ahead and I forked the repo. This is like the first step. If you want to contribute to an open source project, you fork their repo and then you will get your own repo. So if I go ahead and click fork over here, that'll take me to my existing forks. Click on this. You'll see I have one here, Web Dev Cody ZSA. And so now you have your own fork of the repo. And what I do is I typically clone this down locally. All right, so over here on my MacBook, I have a ZSA directory that's been cloned. And the second thing I typically do is the upstream. I go ahead and make a new git remote add, and then I'll say upstream, and I'll put a, a link to the upstream repo, which is the ZSA package that's maintained by Ido Pesco. So what this allows me to do is I can make changes to my origin, and then if I decide that I want to make a PR, I can go ahead and push one up. Uh, against upstream, I can pull in the changes that he's making daily. So the next step is after you forked your own repo and you cloned your code, I wanted to go ahead and hook in my running application to their library over here, right? And so there's a really cool tool with NPM called NPM Link. So let me go ahead and just give you a quick walk walkthrough of how that works. So over here we have their project at this directory. And then over here I have my project at this working directory. And I want to link this project to this one over here. So how do you actually do that? Um, there's a couple ways you can do this. And again, this is the library uh, panel and this is the my project, okay? So the way you can basically overwrite your package JSON and tell this ZSA package or the ZSA React package to point to the one that's locally is you can use an NPM link. Now there's some more context I wanna give. Um, this is a turbo repo slash mono repo. Right, and so if you typically in a mono repo, there's a packages directory, and inside of that, you will see individual npm modules where there's you know isolated code in there, and then the turbo repo just helps like develop on this locally a lot better than if you were to like manually have to run npm run dev on all of these things. And I'm sorry, this video is going to be a little bit all over the place because I don't even know how to even explain this, but I'm using use server action from the library. So if you go up here, I have a zsa react import coming in. And again, I have the repo cloned locally. So I want to go ahead and say, you know what, instead of pointing and allowing uh, NPM to download an actual specific version from the internet, I want to go ahead and just say NPM link, and then you can put a location. So I can say ZSA slash, and I can say packages slash ZSA react. And okay, when you run that, it's going to basically link your project to the one that's locally. Now I do have to do like a sudo in front of this, I think. Let me go ahead and just run that real quick. And now uh, what you'll see, if I were to go to my server action here, I'm going to go ahead and try to modify the use server action in the library that's locally. So let's go to ZSA react slash index and let's find where we're calling use server action. Okay, so here it is. Again, this is the library code. So I'm going to go ahead and just pretend like we're going to add a new feature, right? Let's just pretend like there's an on finish uh, callback that you could potentially pass in. Okay, so I save this and notice I have turbo repo running and it kind of rebuilt my disk directory. I can now go over here and I see that there's an on finish method, right? So I just added functionality to this um, third party library. And now what I can actually do is I can add some, a little bit more functionality. So I need to figure out throughout their code, where do I need to basically call this on finish method when everything is done? Okay, and so the first thing you can do is like read through the code, try to understand it. I did spend some time trying to understand their code. 
But notice that we have an on start and on finish and on success. So what I'm going to do is let's just find on success and figure out like where that is called. So it looks like down here, it is called here. It's also called here. Um, so if there's an error, we call on error. If there's success, we call on success. But then finally, what we should probably call is a ops dot on finish if it's defined. Uh, let me do this. Yeah, so I think that should be potentially good enough. I might have to do this as well. Okay, so we just extended this third party library and gave it some more functionality to have it basically call an on finish uh, method. Now, what I actually might do, because there's multiple statuses we could do, I'm going to say if status is success or error, then we're going to also call on finish. Okay, because there's also like idle and the pending. We don't want to call on finish on those. Okay, so let's, let's test this out. So basically now the new functionality, we're going to go ahead and just put a console log here and say on finished. We're going to print that out. And now, hopefully, if everything goes good, we should be able to load up our console. And again, we're linked to that locally running project. So I'm going to go ahead and just create something real quick. It runs, and it didn't print out on finished. So I think we're not there yet. It's not totally working like we think it should. I'm going to make sure this works by just basically uh, finding this hook here. I'm going to say console log we are here and I want to make sure that this thing shows up in our UI when we actually open this. Okay, we are here. There we go. Go ahead and just create it again and see. Okay, I just had to do a hard refresh in the UI. I think our functionality is good because notice down here it says we are finished. All right, let's just try it again. I'm going to go ahead and just do this, do this, click create group. It says unfinished. Awesome. Now, you might ask why am I adding this functionality? Because in my code, I ended up having to add this line to the on success. I had to add this line to the on error. And it feels like, you know, we should just have an on finish callback that just does it one place, right? So I can just go ahead and clean up this code now, which is nice. And I can just run some generic, like, you know how you do a try catch, you have a finally block. Well, this is kind of like the finally that I think this library should support. So let's just try it one more time. What this should do is prevent closing this modal. So I'm going to go ahead, go to network. I'm going to throttle this really slow, and then I'm going to just call, go ahead and say create. Now we should not be able to close this at all until the server action is done, and now it'll auto close, and we should be able to close it manually. All right, so you just witnessed me basically adding on to a third-party library. Now the next steps would be, well, how do I get this change created and pushed to the actual, like, uh, you know, the one that the other maintainer is maintaining? Okay, so what I would do is before I did the work, I probably would have said get checkout. And then, um, actually, let me get fetch the upstream. I want to get all of the latest changes that are on the upstream branch. I'm going to say get checkout, and I'll say upstream main. Okay, and that's going to check out the latest stuff that's on the upstream main branch, which it looks like June 4th was the last change. Okay, and then I'm going to check out a new branch, and I'm going to say um, add on finish support. Okay. And then I'm going to restash pop that. Awesome. Now, before you just push up code, look at the project and you'll notice that this one has tests. So if I was a good engineer, I would come in here and I'd probably add some type of test to cover the new functionality that I just added. Now, in this case, I am getting a looks like a little bit of a merge conflict or something because I do believe there was some type of refactoring that might have been done. So this is the tricky part with open source software is that you're going to run into a lot of conflicts because um, I already have a PR out that's trying to add some transition support and fix some issues, but that hasn't been merged in yet. So I'm kind of adding functionality to a branch that I thought had certain functionality, but really um, that's not even added yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reset this thing back. Go ahead and just check out upstream main, make sure I got the latest. And at this point, um, I'm going to start fresh. It won't take too much time to add this in. So let's do it again. On finish is a function that does void. But what we should do on this existing code is find out where on success is called. And what we're going to do is also just call ops dot on finish like this. Good enough. And then also where on error is called, um, which I guess is here, we'll call on finish. So this should still work as well. Um, same interface. So let's go back and just verify this one more time in our application, make sure it works. Let's go hard refresh. Go ahead, go to create group. Let's slow this down a little bit, create this. Make sure we can't close it. Yeah, it seems good. So another thing I recommend doing is go to their documentation. I just added a completely new interface called unfinish. 
and we need to go to their documentation. They have a bunch of MD files here. Um, I think it's in the examples, which I think this should be named probably something else like docs. But let's go over here and let's try to figure out where uh, the query, use server action, there's a file here for this. And notice here that we could probably just add an on finish, whatever, just let uh, OpenAI kind of type that up. And I think that's all we need. On start, is this called anywhere else? On finish, and then I'll just go ahead and say like, server action is finished, regardless of error or success. Called for both error and success. That's good enough, we updated some docs. Now again, let's check out a new branch. Um, just go ahead and set on, finish support. I'll just make it a two, whatever. And then we're gonna go ahead and just push our changes up. So I'm gonna say push origin, which is my own repo. And we're gonna push that up. Um, I didn't add anything, so let's go ahead and add something. Commit, and I'll say adding support for a on finish callback, which is invoked after either on success and on error or finally type of functionality. That's probably good enough. Let's just go ahead and push that up. Again, I'm just trying to kind of make a video to kind of explain how this stuff works. Um, but let's go back and now if I go to my own repo here, it says, you know, adding support on finish too, whatever. I'll click a uh, create and compare pull request. And I want to create my repo. I want to kind of merge my changes that I just made into the main branch. So I'm going to say adding on finish callback support. And then go ahead and just type out a quick sentence. Some third party open source software communities are more strict about what you need to describe here. Others are more loosey goosey, which I think are the fun ones to actually contribute to. Uh, let's just create the pull request. And then you wait. If it's an actively maintained repo, the maintainer will get back to you and tell you, hey, we don't need this feature. They'll close it for you. They'll tell you the change stuff. Um, what we could also do though, since we want to give them context of why I'm adding this, uh, I'll say the reason I'm adding this is because in my own code, I needed to disable slash enable the ability for a user to close a sheet slash drawer. And then I'm going to show them my code so that it's more convincing. So I can go ahead and do this. For example, this is what I'm doing in my app. Before adding this functionality, I had to copy the same line in both the on success and on error callbacks. Uh, you know, let me just copy all of this so that there's full context here. Okay, so that is, you know, full circle, how you could potentially contribute to an open source library. If you guys are looking for something to contribute to, I don't know if this library is really asking for contributors, but I mean, you can message the main contributor on X and ask if they need any help. Um, I'm sure you, anyone could always contribute and help write more unit tests and integration tests and end-to-end -end tests over everything. I think it'll help make the library more solid when there's just more tests that adding over it. But hopefully you'll learn something by watching this video. Um, you know, taught you a little bit about NPM link, how to contribute to a third-party service locally when you're also connecting it to your own application. And then I showed you how to basically fork the repo, push your changes up to there and get them back merged into theirs. I'm sure there's something I forgot about, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good day and happy coding.